and welcome to Just The Job, the show that profiles the huge range of careers that are on offer to career seekers in New Zealand today. Now here's a question for you, what's the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist? Well, we're about to open your eyes. In today's program, student Sophie Gilderdale is looking at careers in eye health care and begins her journey looking at getting qualified as an optometrist at the University of Auckland. Then Sophie looks at the practical roles of an optometrist when she spends the day at Specsavers. And finally, Sophie is at the Eye Institute looking at the rewarding career of an ophthalmologist. So let's get a good look at careers in eye healthcare, which will often start at the University of Auckland. Hi, my name is Sophie. I'm a year 13 at St. Mary's College. Today, I will be checking out careers in eye health. Hi, you must be Sophie. Hi. I'm Garen Phillips. Welcome to the uh, university. Thank you. Come on, <laughs> Dr. Garen Phillips, Clinic Director, Department of Optometry and Vision Science, will be showing Sophie around the campus. So do you want to tell me a bit about how to become an optometrist in New Zealand? Like, how long does it take? Well, the course is five years long. The first year is courses from the Biomedical Science uh, program. Okay. And then the following four years are courses from the B-Optom program run from the Department of Optometry Vision Science at the University of Auckland. So in total, it's five years. So Auckland is the only place in New Zealand that you can study? Yes, our department's the only place you can uh, study optometry in New Zealand. Oh, wow. Bachelor of Optometry and Vision Science, which combines optometry with the science of vision. You know, you need to know the science to understand how the eye works and how the eye sees. Um, and there's a strong emphasis on both of those components within the course itself. Lily Chang has a Bachelor of Optometry and is currently completing postgraduate study towards a PhD. Hi, you must be Lily. Oh, hi, and you must be Sophie. Yeah, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. I thought perhaps today we'll talk about the anatomy of the eye. Okay, cool. The eyes are not just two eyeballs in the sockets of your yeah. skull. Um, it's actually um, connected to a lot of other muscles and um, a, a nerve takes the information from the eyeball to the brain. So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and um, take everything apart okay. and put them back like a jigsaw puzzle. In the first two years of the course, students build their knowledge base. There's a balance of practical and theory with a strong focus on learning the workings of the eye. So what would you say is the part that you enjoy the most about your job? Um, so clinically, I think it's the, it's the patient interaction. As you um, take on the information they, they tell you, you need to interpret the, what they actually mean as well. And um, later on, if you find that they're bringing their family members back into your practice, you know that you're definitely doing something right. So we have these 3D models, but is there any other way that the students can learn about the anatomy of the eye? We actually have um, very good resources online. From here, you can look at an eyeball. Did you want to have a play? Sure. If we zoom out and say if you wanted to look at um, the optic nerve, which is another structure we looked at um, with the eye model, you can click onto that. Understanding optics and how they relate to vision is an important part of optometry. Dr. Jason Tudufenua sheds some light on the subject. What happens here is that you can move this guy here. Yeah, so what we should see is the filament. So the reason why and uh, why we teach optics here at the um, for, for the optometrists is that uh, a lot of their work involves prescribing lenses and also using equipment which is optical uh, equipment. So it's important for students to understand the physical principles behind uh, the lenses that they're prescribing and also the equipment that they use in their everyday clinical practice. In each year there's about 50 to 55 students. Smaller class sizes allows the lecturers to get to know the students better individually and, and potentially tailor some of the teaching to individual students which you couldn't do in a large class size. So what is this piece of equipment here? This is a special type of microscope, except that you can use it to look at the tissues of the eye on all your patients. I did sciences at school and I had thought about engineering, but I like interacting with people and I thought optometry was a good way to use science subjects and work with people. I finished my degree in 1998 and then I went out and worked in private optometry practice for another six years before coming back to do some further study. And you can see the details in the iris. Cool. 
This um, eye clinic is where you'll see members of the public. The University of Auckland operates an eye clinic where optometry students in their final two years of study get to treat real patients. Wow. Would you like to see um, part five student working with a patient right now? We've got a patient Absolutely. you can see. Well, come and let's have a look. Yeah. So what is it that you're doing here? Um, so we're doing a process called retinoscopy. We're just um, using the curvatures of the eye to see if they're likely going to need any glasses. What has been your favourite part over these years? Um, I've really enjoyed the technical skills um, and of course working with the other students, the supervisors and um, the public that we get in as our patients. So you work at the clinic here, but do you get to go anywhere else to learn? Yeah, um, in our final year we um, have a three work week externship so that um, allows us to go into a private practice or a hospital and get some real world experience. Um, and also during the degree we spend some time with ophthalmologists so um, that's really good as well. This is the uh, dispensing area where patients come and choose appropriate frames and lenses for their needs. Yeah. And then we match that lens to the correct frame so that the whole thing is um, appropriate for the person. So what about contact lenses? Well, that's a very good question, Sophie. Um, we've just scratched the surface with glasses and um, that's certainly an option. That's a large part of the course that we teach, which we haven't even touched on today. There's yeah. areas of children's vision, there's areas of older person's vision, as well as eye alignments, as well as areas in terms of uh, treating eye disease where optometrists are now becoming more involved, so it's quite a lot to learn. Well, from what I've seen, uh, Sophie'd make an excellent optometry student and optometrist. She interacts well with people, she listens well, she's clearly good with, with patients and, and with the public, so I think um, she'd make an excellent student. The Bachelor of Optometry program is a set program that consists of five years of undergraduate study at the University of Auckland. The first year, part one, comprises prerequisite courses from the Bachelor of Science, Biomedical Science first year. Part two and three contain a mixture of courses in applicable life sciences and vision science and the basic optometric sciences, with parts four and five largely devoted to clinical practice. Useful school subjects include biology, chemistry, physics, maths and English. Well done Sophie, with training like that I can see you'll have a promising future. After the break Sophie is putting the career of an optometrist into focus with spec savings. You're watching Just The Job and this week we're focusing on careers that are all about looking after your eyes. Time now for Sophie to head to spec savings. Optometry is a competitive profession where technology and fashion merge. Consumer demand has seen an increase in stores and clinics and a growing need for qualified optometrists. Sophie is at Specsavers to meet Philip Walsh. Hi, you must be Sophie. Hi. I'm Philip, the optometrist. Welcome to Specsavers. Thank you. Hey, come on in. Well, Specsavers uh, opened its first uh, practice or store in New Zealand in November 2008. Uh, the company is an international organisation and it's been going for oh, over 25 years now. Internationally there's over a thousand stores uh, worldwide and um, in New Zealand there's 53 and we cover the country. We go from the north and uh, Kaitai all the way down to Invercargill. So in the patient journey, well, it just begins with making an appointment. You might just have someone come in and browse, you know, and then might want to be just given some information around frames and lenses or contact lenses. Hi there, you must be Lorraine. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Chris, this is Sophie. Uh, hi. I understand you've got an appointment booked with us yeah. today. So if you'd like to come across, we'll get you registered and, okay. and, and start things off. Um, at Specsavers, we've tried to uh, engage with the average Kiwi, make it a less threatening experience, make it accessible to them, and make that primary eye care good value to them. Okay, Lorraine, just need to confirm some of the details we've got for you. Just make sure we've got everything right here. Um, surname we've got is, is Harville. So I just need to take a measurement of your, um, or have a look at your current glasses if you've got them with me. We're just going to okay. take a measurement from those so we can see. Some of the challenges at work revolve around um, maintaining really high customer standards. And it's very important in our store that everyone gets a fantastic sort of customer journey and we have to work really hard and to ensure that the whole team is really engaged and giving people the best experience possible. So why do you need to measure her glasses? Well, we've never seen Lorraine before so by measuring her glasses we know what her current prescription is and it gives us a, a starting point so that when the patient asks whether their prescription has changed we can say yes or no, we know where, where they're at at the moment. 
Hello, Lorraine. Philip Hi. Walsh. I'm the optometrist. I'll do your eye test today. Well, no one day in Specsavers stores will run exactly the same, but at any one time you could have an eye examination taking place, someone having their contact lenses checked, someone's going to having some pre-screening, maybe choosing some frames or collecting their glasses. So there can be lots of things happening in the store at one time. So, Lorraine, what we'll do is just move you over to the other machine. That's the digital retinal camera. The digital retinal camera takes a photograph of the back of the patient's eyes. You can see it's fully automated. Once you have the patient in place, all you do is push the button and it aligns and takes the photograph on the back of the eye. So, Lorraine, we're just going to run you through the visual field screening test here. So, what I want you to do is we're going to be looking straight ahead. You'll see a little black dot in the centre of the screen there. Keeping pace with technology is a challenge. There is the, I suppose you'd say the industry is ch changes rapidly and there's always a challenge to keep the staff and myself up to date on that. How long has it been since your last eye test? Uh, probably about a year. Mm -hmm. yep. With the eye examination, so we take all that information that we've just um, got from the tonometer, the autorefactor and visual fields and then we use that information to do a full eye examination. The full eye examination, of course, we're wanting to know why the patients come to see us. Okay? We ask them questions about their health, their ocular history, and their family history. And then we want to know some things about what their lifestyle is like as well. Lorraine, I think you've met Chris before. Hi, Lorraine. How did so, you go? No problems at all. Very straightforward eye examination. Everything's nice and healthy. The only thing we're going to talk to Lorraine about is some reading glasses. Yep. But I did suggest you maybe have a chat with her about some occupational lenses, because okay. she is using the computer a lot as well as her reading. Sure. Okay. okay. In terms of becoming an optometrist, I think um, probably the most important thing, as I've said before, is you probably need to like people. Having that sort of uh, confidence and your ability to make a decision is important. I think the training at university gives you a lot of that confidence and obviously then experience helps improve that confidence as well. Hi Jess, how are Hi, you? Hello. Okay, good to see you. <laughs> you too. Um, Jess, I'd like you to meet Sophie. Hi. Hi. Jess is on the Optology Specsavers graduate program, oh. okay, so I thought you guys should have a little bit of a chat. We can't have a practice or a store without an optometrist all the time and the first two years of their professional life is quite a challenging period for them and we have what we call a graduate program. So do you want to tell me a bit about the graduate program at Specsavers? Yeah, sure. So um, once you've finished the optometry degree, you're fully qualified. So it's really your first year out of uni is gaining all of your clinical skills and building up your confidence and, you know, seeing as many patients as you can, which is why Specsavers is a great place to work because they have high volume of customers. So also um, with Specsavers graduate program, the store owner is usually your mentor. Also what we do um, as a Specsavers group, all of the graduates get together every few months and we all bring a different case and discuss the different um, scenarios and differential diagnosis and to see you know if that's how we'd manage our patients so it's really all about getting as much learning as you can and utilizing all of the learning at uni and putting it into practice. It's been great to meet Sophie I think she did extremely well today she's really confident she's enthusiastic and she's got excellent communication skills so I think she's got all the attributes to be a great optometrist. To be accepted into the Specsavers graduate program, you must complete a Bachelor of Optometry. You'll be placed in a store in New Zealand or Australia and be mentored by an experienced optometrist. There's ongoing training, including attending regular conferences with your peers. Well, it looks like Sophie is really enjoying eye health careers. She's checking out ophthalmology next, but before that, here's Sarah from Careers New Zealand. Thanks, Clinton. Well, Sophie is discovering that there are many opportunities in eye health care, and lots of industries do have different entry levels. You may want to specialise in one particular area, or move around that industry as your career progresses and you gain more skills. If you want some tips on planning your career, our Career Checker is a great place to start, and you can find it online at careers.govt.nz forward slash checker. Thank you, Sarah. After the break, Sophie's heading to Eye Institute to observe some fascinating and life-changing eye surgery. Don't go away. You're watching Just The Job. Let's join Sophie again now as she has a closer look at careers in ophthalmology. Ophthalmology is the speciality within medicine that deals with delicate eye surgery, such as cataract surgery, as well as treating diseases of the eye. The Eye Institute was established in the late 1990s. Using the latest technology, resident ophthalmologists have performed life-changing eye surgeries on thousands of New Zealanders. 
Sophie's meeting Dr okay. Trevor Gray. Hi Sophie, nice to meet you. I'm Trevor Gray. Oh, nice to meet you too. Should we go and have a chat? Absolutely. Come on through. So Trevor, why did you decide to go into ophthalmology? Easy. It's the coolest thing I could find in medicine. It's just amazing how one can, within 15 minutes, almost painlessly change somebody's life forever. It's just hugely rewarding and, and so much fun. Hi Jim, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Okay, come on through, please grab a seat. Yeah, so Jim was referred up to us um, from his optometrist in Palmerston North, who had confirmed Jim's uh, awareness that his vision, uh, after being perfect four years ago after his cataract surgeries, had gone significantly blurry in his left eye. Trevor switches to the YAG laser to burn away a hazy membrane in Jim's left eye. The popping sounds are little explosions. Perfect. All done. The entire procedure takes less than 10 seconds. Any pain? No. no. Uh. Dr Adam Watson is an eye surgeon whose focus is the front of the eye. So why did you decide to specialise in eyes? Uh, I did medicine because I thought I was going to be a psychiatrist. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I did discover while I was at medical school uh, that I like surgery, I like very fine surgery and I like knowing a lot about a small part of the body, and that's what eyes can give you. I'm a, I'm a front of the eye person, okay. so when I was over in England for three years, I especially subspecialized in, uh, in cornea and refractive surgery, uh, doing cataract, and also in eyelid surgery. What's the best thing about your job? The joy of ophthalmology is that you can make a huge difference to people. And you can um, literally see someone today who has poor vision, maybe ne next to being blind, and after surgery, tomorrow, they can be seeing maybe 20-20. It's an incredible occupation in that way. And another blink, and wide as you can. Technology is very integrated within ophthalmology. Um, ophthalmology is almost one of the most technology-driven subspecialties within medicine. So we can offer our patients better care, better vision, and safer vision correction. What this machine does is all of the most delicate parts of cataract surgery. So it can create all of the incisions into the eye that we need to make. It doesn't need a blade. Wow, it's amazing. I know, it is. Yeah. Seriously. I love this machine. Yeah. <laughs> Another of the Eye Institute specialists who has performed over 15,000 cataract operations is Dr Peter Ring. Although the eye is a very small organ, it's actually a very complicated organ, as I'm sure you're aware. And so it's, it's become so specialised now that people actually sub-specialise into little parts of a little organ. Awesome. And, you know, the surgery on the back of the eye is totally different from the surgery in the front of the eye. Professor Helen Dinesh Meyer specialises in complex glaucoma and cataract surgery. So Mrs Robson, we're just putting a clear drape across your face now. Yes. Cataract surgery is technologically very advanced and every movement and every uh, uh, machine and every um, instrument we use has a very specific and precise purpose. You have to be happy for nothing less than perfection because you're working with a very small area so perfection is the goal, you know, millimeters count and it's actually beautiful, beautiful surgery to do. So the first thing we need we make is three tiny little keyholes, two or one millimeter in size. The, the qualities to be a good eye surgeon, I think, start off with the qualities to be a good doctor. Uh, I think the most important is compassion and a, a real genuine uh, caring and interest in people and being a, a part of people's life who feel vulnerable. So that's all the hard bit in the center, the nucleus out. We're doing very well, Mrs. Morgan. It's just a, a big cataract and a small opening, so we're just taking our time. Mm. You're okay, my dear? Yes, I'm Right, right. we're doing very nicely. You can see how that's opening up? Yeah. You can see how small her eye is because it takes up the whole yeah. space. You've done super well. It was a big cataract. Oh, good. Glad we got it out. Yes, I know you are. One of the most common comments I hear about from patients is, vision is the most precious thing I have. I wouldn't want to lose my vision. So to be part of a, a career that actually works to help preserving people's vision and improving it is, is, is a gift, really. It's a pleasure to come to work every day. Hi there. Hi. Oh, da it's Daniela, is it? Sure. Hi, I'm Linda. Daniela has come to Eye Institute for follow-up laser surgery. Linda's role was to prep the patient prior to meeting her surgeon, Dr Nick Mantell. 
Yeah, so the patient this morning um, is Daniela. Uh, she had uh, a laser procedure for, to correct her short-sightedness probably about six months ago. Um, and she came back today because we are doing a bit of fine-tuning. Um, basically, it doesn't matter how good you are or how accurate the treatment is, uh, unfortunately there's probably about a 5% chance that the focus that you get after surgery is not quite what we want. Now fortunately, we know that we can go back and, and fine-tune that. Light's just going to get a bit brighter for a moment here, all right? Doing a great job there. So I really like the, the idea of ophthalmology. Um, it was really challenging to get into, but the technology and the uh, science behind it really intrigued me. All done. All done. Well, it's life-changing for people. That's what I love about it. Um, within the space of 10 or 15 minutes, we can really change people's lives. Uh, they go from, in some cases, almost being blind to seeing the next day, and, uh, and it's quite a thrill. I'll come and see you in about 15 minutes before you go home. Uh -huh. Fantastic, that went really well. We're incredibly busy here. So within a week, I'd probably have two, maybe three operating sessions, which are half-day sessions, and the rest of the time I'm cons consulting. So Sophie was a, was a great surprise. I mean, she was an intelligent young woman and very personable and has all the qualities to be a fantastic doctor, but she's certainly what, got what it takes. Focus, vision, intelligence, determination. To consider a career in ophthalmology, you'll need to take sciences and maths, and you'll need high marks. Next, complete a five-year degree in medicine. Vocational training is offered through the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Ophthalmology. You'll be awarded a fellowship on the satisfactory completion of examinations and training. Be prepared to work hard, however the rewards are numerous. I've learnt so much over my time looking at careers to do with eye health. I really enjoyed the student aspect of optometry. I enjoyed learning about all of the technology to do with optometry at Specsavers. And I so loved learning about the surgery at the Eye Institute. Well done, Sophie, and thanks to the University of Auckland, Specsavers Takapuna and Eye Institute. To find out more about the training opportunities and careers in eye healthcare, plus information about all the careers that we feature in this series, you can visit our program website, tvnz.co.nz slash just the job, or simply Google just the job. So best of luck, and I'll see you next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.